When we start playing period instruments, we have to adapt to a lot of different technique changes. One of the biggest things that I get asked about is my bow hold on the Baroque bow. My particular style of bow technique comes from my teacher, Phoebe Karai, who is on faculty at the Historical Performance Department at the Juilliard School and also at the Longy School in Cambridge, where I studied. The basic principle that sets aside her technique, I feel, is the pinky on top. I'll talk more about the pinky on top a little bit later. One thing you'll see with pretty much anyone playing a Baroque instrument is they typically hold the bow further away from the frog. Here's my Baroque bow. I've talked a lot about this bow and how it works in a couple of other videos, but it's nice to review. The Baroque bow has a lighter, pointier tip, um, which makes the up bows typically weaker than the down bows. And because of the curve of the stick, which I can show you even more if I tighten the bow, you can see that the stick curves away from the hair in the center of the bow, which gives a swell of sound in the middle and a decay at the end. Because of the different shape of the bow, um, the balance point of the bow is actually in a different place than some modern bows. So you can take your broke bow, whatever you have, and find the balance point just by finding the place in the bow where it actually will balance on your finger. Is that it? Almost got it. Okay. And then once you've got your balance point, you can go about halfway back towards the frog, roughly around there. So a modern bow hold, of course, we'd be holding really right here at the frog. But for this Baroque bow, we're going to want to come up, choke up, as we call it, a little bit on the bow. Now, everyone's hand and arms are a little bit different. So I think bow holds and even left hand technique is a little bit personal. But for me, I have long fingers and long arms. So I am trying to get my contact point for the bow to be generally kind of the last knuckle of my fingers, because if I get too deep into my fingers, which is easy to do with my long fingers, it becomes too much of a full hand motion and I don't have a lot of flexibility. If I try to stick more to the tips of my fingers, then I actually have control because the tips are where I can move things. Um, so that's what I find has worked best for me. Um, it helps keep me flexible, but it definitely makes my bow hold look a little crazier because I've got long fingers and I'm way out at the tips of my fingers. So it definitely looks a little strange, but I find this gives me the most flexibility, which is really needed uh, when we want to have a versatile voice in our right hand. So I'm doing standard bow hold things that we would do on modern bow, which is that I'm bending my thumb as much as I can to keep a round opening here, not pressing with the thumb. And I'm trying to have a small amount of even space between each finger. I find if my hand gets too, my fingers get too close together, then I get back again into claw grip, which we really want to avoid. So a little bit of space between each finger. Um, I'm letting the contact point of the hair be the tip of my second finger, my middle finger. And I'm really letting my first finger curl around the stick. So my bow hold is definitely a pronated bow hold, you know, a little bit this way, as opposed to a straight on bow hold. And I find that by curling this first finger and having it uh, really able to grab the stick, I can do a lot with the push and the pull. This first finger strength gives me a lot of options. So to counter that, what I do is put my pinky on top of the stick. And, um, you know, this is how most violinists bow with the pinky on top. And it's really handy, especially, you know, in Baroque repertoire, because we want to be able to quickly come off the string, quickly counterbalance the bow. The pinky, especially as the pinky gets stronger, can really help balance between this curved first finger and the back of the hand. So we have this sort of seesaw effect whenever we need it. Flexible fingers are completely essential for your bow hand, so if you feel like you're kind of in a claw grip stage, you'll want to be doing a lot of slow warm-ups and exercises just to get your fingers kind of woken up. Um, the fingers are not everything, and when I sit down with my cello, I'll show you how we do still want to use arm and shoulder and back and elbow and still be integrating all the parts of the right side. Um, but having the flexibility in the fingers is what really lets us do that detail work. Um, so keeping the pinky on top as much as you can to try to use as a counterbalance and grabbing with the first finger allows you a lot of push and pull. You can do little exercises like this where you just raise and lower the bow using just the fingers just to get them kind of woken up. I like to imagine that it's kind of like the tips of the fingers are like sticky pads, they're stuck in place, but the rest of the hand and fingers has mobility.
So once you get oriented with choking up a little bit on the bow, getting your pinky on top and your hand a little pronated, we can start applying this bow hold. So a good exercise just to get your fingers even more awake is seeing how much you can actually bow without using any part of your arm. So I'm just gonna go on the G and it's not gonna sound pretty, but I'm gonna use just my fingers to do a bow stroke. So you just wanna be aware of what you have available to you from the fingers alone. And you can see what I do is when I'm pulling a down bow, I actually imagine my hand pulling away this way. And then once I'm ready for an up bow, I'm gonna actually revert completely and now I'm gonna push this way. And all the while my hand is tracking, slowly changing over the bow stroke. your bow strokes from on the string just focusing on finger flexibility opening the elbow and then once you're ready adapting to an off the string bow stroke especially when playing off the string is when we really need the pinky to come into play <laughs> for each of those up bows. And of course the first finger, which is a more normal thing we're used to using, is helping pull the down bows. Especially you'll find if you have a big string crossing, it's really helpful to be able to just adjust your fingers and use them to work pushing the string. Gut strings are not as responsive as steel strings, so all these little details incorporating the fingers are helping us coax the best sound out of the string. For the low strings especially, we need a really kind of special care to get them fully resonating because if we do a big arm stroke, we don't get a real sound from the C string. But if we use our fingers, integrate and go deeper into the string, then we can really get the core of the string ringing. To an extent, bow holds are personal. Um, it's really not one size fits all, but it does make a lot of sense to play with the pinky on top, at least for an overhand bowing like this, because in the Baroque period, it's likely that all the violin family instruments were using the same bow hold, and that cello hadn't really adapted its own bow hold necessarily at that time. There is, of course, a whole another world of underhand bowing that comes from gamba playing, um, which I am not a real specialist in underhand bowing. Um, so all my bowing that I do is like this, pinky on top, violin family. Um, but there is another world of bowing if you are curious that you can look into as well. And that underhand bowing technique was really used mostly in the 17th century, though again, I'm not really an expert on it. Getting used to any technique thing is hard in the beginning and takes some patience, but I think learning how to play with the pinky on top, how to be pronated, and how to balance your weight and really use the fingers in your bow hand can help expand your musical possibilities when playing. If you're intrigued by this bow hold, you should definitely check out my other videos on bow technique. I have some on scale warm-ups and exercises just to really get you going with the Baroque bow. Thanks so much for watching. Don't hesitate to leave your questions in the comments section and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I do new videos and lessons on Baroque music every week and I'm always open to your suggestions and questions. If you'd like to help support the production of these videos, you can become my patron on Patreon. Thanks for watching.